Usu, what's up guys? My name is Jake Xiao and finally Jujutsu Kaisen is back. We actually haven't been able to go through a chapter review in quite a while because there was a week break last week. But now we're back and return to Kashimo vs Hakari, which I've been looking forward for, and I know you guys have been too. If you haven't already, make sure you leave a like on the video, uh, subscribe if you're new, turn on the post notifications, come sit down, relax, enjoy, and we're about to experience some greatness. A bit of cinema. Without further ado, <laughs> let's get into the video. So from the last time that we left off, we remember that Hakari was, you know, doing up Michael Jackson moves and was basically enjoying his cursed energy output. He was immortal for 4 minutes and 11 seconds and then he activated the domain expansion so then he could be able to get that same power again. But now, instead of facing Charles, he's actually facing Kashimo. So how is it going to work when he's actually fighting in the normal stage? Well, funnily enough, as everything hits Kashimo in the head and he gets all the rules that he needs for the jackpot, he seems to be in a different scenario since he's actually within a probability shift. This probability shift is meant to indicate the fact that Hakari is now has an advantage as he's starting again with the next person. His jackpot chances has actually increased and if he's able to hit the jackpot, he's going to be immortal again. So yeah guys, it seems that when you hit jackpot, it's not going to be changing the effects. It mostly seems like it's going to be changing just to be immortal. Which I know some people wanted to see something different but against someone like Kashimo, I think he needs it. So right now, the way it stands is that Hakari is not immortal and Kashimo can actually kill him because obviously now they're in the probability shift, meaning that he's quite vulnerable to attacks now. So then, you know, Hakari had to hit him with a cheeky gambling responsibly or whatever, you know what I'm saying? And he's saying it's impossible. He's trying to say gambling responsibly is a myth. Because how do you gamble responsibly, you know? It's kind of true though, he's not wrong, but yeah, like, how do you gamble responsibly? But it seems like Kashimo then approaches Hakari with fast pace and hits him in the head with a backhand. It seems to be a bit of a tussle, but it seems like Hakari is holding up his own, especially with the fact that he's not immortal anymore, this seems to be really great. Hakari then tried to hit him with his own type of backhand, but then he's grabbed by Kashimo, who is showing great hand-to-hand -hand combat. And it's absolutely destroying Hakari in the process. But even amidst all of the beatings that Hakari is receiving, he is then pumped up and he says, yo, keep going. So I'm assuming that he gets like a sort of satisfaction from getting hit. And in fact, it seems like he enjoys it. And then he activates a pseudo roll. I believe pseudo rolls can re-roll a single sequence, which will basically mean that he's going to get a high hype sequence again. And with the jackpot chances also increasing, he will then be put in a better position. When he activated the pseudo rolls, it seems that he points both of his fingers out. And with putting both of his fingers, it seems he activated the chance to get a jackpot even faster. Or reach the reach sequence. Even him using pseudo rolls in the first place, usually he doesn't use it unless he's in a probability shift. So Kashima repeatedly beats him using her down combat. And Hakari seems to be enjoying it and actually powering through. I'm assuming that part of the reason why he built up such a physique is because he knows that when he's in a position where it's a normal sequence or has an activated probability shift, he needs to be strong enough to withstand a lot of these hard att hitting attacks. But then the reach was being activated, so he got two sixes, and the way that he's gonna win is obviously by getting three. But the animation wise, the reach wise, what he needs to do is for the character to actually end up going to the train station without any problems and as soon as they reach the end of the train station he wins and with that being the case that animation got reached and it meant that Hakari was back to being an immortal being even he was like music star and that really hyped him up in the process as well and that meant the beginning of the 4 minutes and 11 seconds of being immortal activated meaning that the unlimited cursed energy has returned and the, that means it's an automatic reverse curse technique. So Kashimo analyzes the situation and realizes that in 4 minutes and 11 seconds, he actually needs to defeat Hakari. He's a person that longs for fighting and sees himself not as a small fry. So in doing so, he's challenging himself to actually kill an immortal being. That's a challenge in his own right. So Kashimo then exerts a lot of cursed energy 
electrical curse energy more than we've ever seen before and seems ready to be able to take him down in 4 minutes and 11 seconds. That's going to be a mission, especially against someone such as Hakari. Funnily enough, even Kashimo is now preaching for him to turn up the music and meet his living funeral. Do you know how funny that is? I think Kashimo really gets a hype from being hype as well. He's matching the energy of Hakari and he knows that he wants to take him out, especially knowing how strong he is. But that's when we actually get introduced to a flashback. Now, this flashback is a very interesting flashback because it contains Kashimo's old form. And we see a little surprise in someone new, Kenjaku. So, We've seen these two, it seems that Kenjaku was really fond of Kashimo and Kashimo was fighting opponents as usual which he found very easy and then Kenjaku then let us know that Ishiguri who was the one that fought Yuta before was existing during that time period since this was 400 years ago. So Kashimo being 400 years ago as well, they lived in the same time period but they just lived a bit far away from each other. So Kenjaku recommends it to him but he's like yeah it's a bit too far. So then he's like who is the strongest person to ever live and it seems that Kenjaku had to bring out Sukuna. Now this brings a lot of awareness to people that think that the limitless and the six eyes is actually quite weak and they actually have fears that Gojo would lose to Sukuna since Kenjaku said that's the strongest. I don't think that's exactly how it works but we're gonna find out later on anyway. This motivates Kashimoto to actually be having a contract with Kenjaku which would then bring him on later to be able to fight Sukuna in the Kulin games as we are seeing now. If he can even get past Hakari in the first place, I don't know but then we'll see and he will we'll know if he's gonna challenge Sukuna. But the fact that they're actually repeating this must mean he has something scary in the locker. Until we see like a flashback from Hakari and something maybe to show that Hakari is gonna be going crazy. It seems like Kashimo might just have the upper hand here, especially when he was being an upper hand to hand combat. It seems like he's gonna pass his limits and then move kinda crazy. But him being a mortal, he also definitely survived the 4 minutes and 11 seconds, but we'll see what will happen afterwards. Anyway guys, uh, that's pretty much the end of the chapter. It's a really sick chapter, I'm not gonna lie, especially the shot with Kashimo looking back, saying that, yo, I wanna face Akuna. So, you know, I'll do the contract with you. And he looks kind of swaggy, even though he's kind of old. But enough of me talking, you know, I kind of explained how the chapter kind of worked. So then you guys could understand and make sure that you have an easier time when you're reading the chapters. Also, you know, I do it kind of early. So then the people who see it early, you know, have a bit of fun. You guys tell me down in the comments down below what you think about the chapter, number one. I also want to know what you guys think would be the outcome of the fight now or do you believe that Hakari does have something up his sleeve to then use against Kashimo? And what is the curse technique of each? I don't even know the curse technique of Hakari yet if it's been revealed, vice versa with Kashimo. So this is going to be a very interesting set of chapters and also I want to know thirdly, what do you think about the six eyes and the limitless in back in the day but Kenjaku saying that Sukuna is the strongest. Does that mean that Gojo is pretty much done? Does that just mean Gojo is the strongest of them all because he's able to find out more and being able to enhance it? Who knows? Anyway, thank you guys for watching. If you haven't already, make sure you leave a like on the video, subscribe if you're new. And as I say to the new and old people that come and visit the channel, Jana.